Welcome back to the Artie Lang Show. We are live in the AshleyMadison.com studios. My name is Mike Calta, filling for Artie Lang along with Kay Adams and Robert Kelly. And uh, a big, big uh, major announcement. I want to get this in before we go any further. The Yankees have oh, beaten boy. the Red Sox. <laughs> 14 to 5. All so right, you can take Stop. a pitcher out of rotation. It will not affect the great Stop New York Yankees. Clap and Shane. In the uh in the studio with us right now is uh the great Diamond Dallas Page who is a wrestling legend and is now but most wrestlers and I know this, they all live in my neighborhood and for some reason and I would imagine it has to do with Hulk Hogan had all migrated from Canada and the rest of the world to the Tampa Bay area. <laughs> And they've all mostly come there to die. And I'm talking about Brian Nobbs, mostly. Oh, God. Uh, but no, I'm kidding. Love, but love Brian. Though. Yeah, Brian Nobbs is my buddy. <laughs> but uh, Diamond Dallas Page is one of the rare wrestlers that has had a post-career career. Uh, and not only are you out there uh, still making money and still uh, making headlines, but you are uh, saving lives. Not just famous people, but people all around the country. And I have never seen anybody so into what they're doing. You are actually borderline scary for a fat guy like me to be around because you are so, everything you say is motivational. And then uh, once I leave uh, you, it's, I could hear you yelling at me as I reach for a French fry. How are you, buddy? As you sit with black jelly beans. Those are Robert Kelly's. Kelly's. Okay, I don't need- <laughs> I threw my Chipotle away. I'm unstoppable. I'm you a- are. <laughs> That's the problem, though, is the most med- motivational guys I could beat up, but he, <laughs> uh, he'll kick your ass. Like, you can't get lippy with you. No. I, I have, actually have a, a DDP yoga T-shirt that says, our DDP, our yoga teacher can kick your yoga teacher's ass. <laughs> <laughs> Without a doubt. Uh, uh, we've, we've seen a lot of uh, your success stories, but the two most famous ones have got to be Jake the Snake Roberts and, and uh, Scott Hall. Those are the two guys that everybody knows. Jake the Snake Roberts and uh, Scott Hall were recently inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame, which is a huge deal, whether you're a wrestling fan or not, because you're talking about two guys who were uh, on death's door a couple of times, both uh, Mm. alcoholics, drug addicts, guys that you pretty much gave up on and just waited to hear that they died until you got into their lives. How do you convince them to do what nobody else can do? Well, I wasn't really trying to convince either one of them of anything. In the beginning, I was just trying to convince Jake in a way to like, why don't you just take a look at this as opposed to you need to do this. Right. Um, the program I have, the whole DDP yoga program, it's not just about a workout. It's about you know how you decide to eat, whether it's doing calorie counting or eating for health. And when your body, a lot of alcoholics and drug addicts, what I have found, they're in a lot of pain. Not just mentally, but physically. And in this scenario with these two guys, they are so beat up like myself. Right. You know, people can say what they want about professional wrestling. The one thing rings true. You can't fake gravity. No. You know, gravity will kick your ass every time. And these guys are so beat up. When it came to Jake, you have to understand where we come from. With Jake, I always have to say this first. Without Dusty Rhodes, there is no Diamond Dallas Page. But without Jake Roberts, there's no three-time world champion DDP. It just never happens. He took me in. He mentored me. uh, He taught me stuff that guys just wouldn't take the time to do. And he made me figure stuff out. He actually lived with me, you know, for three months until he lost that black cobra in my house. Right. (laughs) That's a true story. What What happened? Jake lost a black cobra, 12-foot-long black cobra. It was actually in the bathroom. And uh, it's it's a story. I talked I talked about it at the Hall of Fame, uh, but what well, that right then I thought he wasn't living with us after that. Right. Uh, but uh, he kept mentoring me, and I could bring my matches to him, and he would you know critique them for me, and then he'd show me some of his stuff, and he'd critique that, and I just I, he was a fountain of knowledge for me. And then my career in '96, you have to understand, I started wrestling at 35. Yeah, that's my crazy. career took off when I was 40, so. I, that was 1996, the, that, that beginning of the real Monday Night Wars where it was really heated. Yeah. 97 and 98, I was on top of the world. And I made a lot of money. And Jake helped me make that. And over the years, I'd help him out when he needed a hand. But, you know, there's only so many times I'm going to give somebody a fish. And right. Jake hadn't asked me in a long time. So I called him to see how he was doing. And he said, I'm doing great. I was like, really, dude? You're doing great? Yeah. He's like, No. Life sucks. I'm pissed off when I wake up in the morning because I'm not dead. Like, that was his attitude. There was no light at the end of the tunnel. There was no tunnel. 
And so I said, let me just send you. Actually, I got hung up the phone and I called him back. I figured I got nothing to lose. I said, I want to send you this program, dude. I'm helping a lot of people. I don't want you to do the workout. I just want you to read the program guide and try the eating. And I want you to go around the level two, level three. Just try it for 10 days, 15 days, see what happens. And I called him in 10 days and he had lost eight pounds. And he's like, this wasn't so hard. I said, I have an idea. And it really was a vision more than anything. And I didn't tell him till I got there. I said, I want to come here and you got to trust me. Now he'd come off of that movie Beyond the Mat. And in Beyond the Mat, it was a behind the scenes of wrestling for the first time. Beyond the Mat gave you a look at a celebrity doing crack for the first time. Uh, you know, anybody that saw that documentary, it was the it was it was a great movie. It was done really well, but it it showed you the horrors of what it's like to be a professional wrestler before like the Mickey Rourke Hollywood version of it. And Jake did not think that that was going to happen. Yeah, it was sort of more like if you looked at the uh, you saw the movie that uh, uh, the fighter, the one that uh, uh, Mark, Mark Wahlberg. Uh, that was awesome. But the part that his brother played, um, who played him, was amazing. Uh, uh, Christian Oscar, Bale, who's one of the greatest actors ever. I didn't know who he was in the opening. I go, who is this guy? He's amazing. And I realized, oh my God, that's Christian Bale. But he thought they're doing a big movie on me. I got a big comeback coming. And no, they're doing a thing about a guy's on crack. Right. And that's what this movie's really about. Sort of like what happened to Scott with the 60 Minutes or the, night, the ESPN thing. Yeah. And uh, for Jake, he didn't know that that's was gonna, what it's going to turn out to. So when that aired and his family saw it and all his kids, I mean, he just went, he was already doing this, but now it's like, yeah. and it damn near killed him and he wanted to die. So I told him when I got to his house, I said, I got my buddy here. He's my business partner. I said, I have a vision of doing a movie, a documentary, that's the resurrection of Jake the Snake. He's like, what do you mean? I said, dude, I think if you really follow what I'm just, I'm just a guide here, I can't do the work. Right. But if you follow me, bro, I think maybe, not this year, but next year, maybe you get in the Hall of Fame. He goes, you're crazy. They're never going to make that happen. I said, you don't know that. Yeah. So we, that's when we started the journey. We started filming everything. So I have this entire journey. So when I was leaving his house that day, I said, you've already lost eight pounds, 10 pounds, whatever it was. I said, if you can lose another 15 pounds in the next six weeks, I'm buying a place in Atlanta. I will move you into my house and I will stick with you this entire ride until we hit the payoff. Wow. I That's said, dedication. You got a guy that you know is going to fall off the wagon a couple of times. You're going to have to, it's like having kids all over again. Yeah, we're in a whole different level. Yeah. You know, and you, you uh, named the house up. What was the house's name? I called it the accountability crib. Yeah. DDP's. <laughs> you know where I got that from? Like, I have a lot of, I got 100,000 people plus who bought my program. Off the internet, yeah, yeah, you know, and that's just from the YouTubes and the different videos that people have seen on DDP TV and uh, different shows that I've been on too. But I said, give me a name to my people. I said, give me a name. And this one girl named Christina Ann said, how about DDP's accountability crib? I go, that's it. Because it's not just you who's got to be accountable. It's me. It's everyone who's working there. Because everybody has to have a positive attitude. And, and some people go, dude, how can you be so positive? I work at it. Yeah, it just doesn't happen. Do you do you get to the root of what it is that that uh, was eating Jake away? Was it just a physical pain? Did he have any trauma as a oh, kid? Oh God! Oh really? And I'm not the I, I I can be that guy to talk with him. Right. But you know the WWE has got the greatest wellness program ever. Yeah. And because I've been put in a hot spot, I've had to say that a couple different times. They have the better than the MLB, the NBA, or the NFL. Wow. Their 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 stuff's real. Give me an give me an idea. They'll if you wrestled for them. At, for any period of time, for your life, they'll cover you if in you, rehab. In if, you, rehab. If, you, if you go into rehab. And, and, it, and it, 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 I, I want to say in some cases I've heard, I don't know, that it even extends to your immediate family. If you have a that, kid that, with a problem. That, that, that I don't know about. Okay. I do know that Jake had been, I'm not sure. Could you yeah, yeah. Jake is either 11 or Scott was 11. And either Scott or Jake had done 12 times. Wow. Between the both, and they had 23 times. And that was all talked about on HBO's Real Sports Special. Anybody wants to see that, go to HBO and, you know, or YouTube and just hit in HBO and DDP, and that'll be, that's a 15-minute piece. It's a great piece. And Frank, that's how I actually found out about you and your uh, DDP yoga is that piece, actually. Frank and then I went amazing. on the YouTube and I went and watched it all. Oh, wow. Thank yeah. you, Robert. Yeah, that's great. That's, that's, you got pulled in it. And that's the whole thing. We've only put out little clips of this 
resurrection of Jake the Snake to let people see. And people are like, why are you doing this? You're exploiting your friend. I'm like, I had another thing to say, and I would go beep, beep, beep. But no, I'm letting the people know because Jake didn't know that people really cared still. Scott didn't know. Yeah. And when they saw that, it gave them hope. That's all you have to do is give someone hope, and it changes their life. Uh, I, I tell you, when I was there at the WWE Hall of Fame, and uh, it, it's really weird because I was thinking about this, and who knew that the Ultimate Warrior went end up passing away right afterwards? But I, I'm thinking about this for Jake as he's up there. Jake got up there, and I figured if he dies in the next month or so, he'll die happy because he got up to be able to stand up in front of all of his fans and his kids and right. his grandkids proudly again once again before he died whereas had you not entered his life god knows what he would have taken to the grave with him and what his family would have thought of him and and uh, he can die a peaceful man i think at this point you know and on the other side without him i'm not standing up there yeah and i don't forget that i don't forget anybody who helped me you know just it's something that's ingrained in me and uh you know for jake to be able that was the goal to walk away with your head held high. And then one night we get, you know, Twitter's just sick amazing, you know. I get a direct message from X-Pac. Yeah. You know, and he says, dude, he goes, Scott, he really sounds bad. You gotta talk to him, you gotta call him. Now over 10 years, when I tell you I call Scott Hall, I don't know, 20 times, never answer the phone. You know, so I just assume, I'm not going to call. He's not going to answer the phone. Yeah. So I said, Jake, now we're, we have cameras all over my house. Right. I said, Jake, you want to do this? I said, go, Chris, start filming this. And, you know, Steve came over and got us basically, okay, so, all right, let's just call. And we put it on the deal. And that call, and there was a lot of heat that came off that call because we didn't put it up right after it happened. I waited till I knew he was coming. Right. Because in between that call and when Scott Hall comes, it's like six weeks. He is he's a different character. Scott Hall, uh, for you non wrestling fans, is he was the bad guy. That's Razor his title. Ramon. Razor Ramon. He he was always that guy and uh he he had that machismo about him at Amazing. all times in the ring and outside the ring. He's a guy that seemed to want to get help a, a lot of times. Before he entered in your house and before he got into your program, he was doing pretty well for a little while. But I remember he was in a rehab in St. Petersburg or somewhere near yep, where I live. And he would say to me, uh, I'm in this rehab, but I could see people selling drugs in the parking lot of the rehab. He's right. like, I know I'm going to fall again because I'm still surrounded by it. And I and I, I don't even know the guy, but I'm feeling bad for him now because I think he's he's going to die. And when I find out he's with you, now all of a sudden I feel like, oh, the angel of wrestling has him. Like, I felt, I felt better for him. And to see him, another guy, on stage at the uh, at the Hall of Fame, oh, it, was, awesome. it was fantastic. It was my birthday. Oh, really? Wow. It was my 58th birthday, man. And I got to see two of my boys rise up from the ashes and, you know, get the respect that, you know, they so deserve. Now, yeah. did you kick them out? Because they did reach their goal. No, Scott, <laughs> Scott, no, I'm it kidding, was before this, but months ago, yeah. Scott said, you know, because, yeah, this is a great story about me and Scott. Scott was, um, you know, when he was looking for a job to come in WCW, back when I was managing the Freebirds. Oh, my God. And uh, he says, hey, Dally, you look like Andre the Giant with those tiny Freebirds. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's like, you know, you should do the Diamond Stud. Remember that, man? You need six foot six, 295 pounds of twisted steel and sex appeal. Uh, I'm no, like, I no. guess that's you. Huh? He's like, yeah. Uh, I go, well, let me run it by the office. So I called up T.A. Magnum. You remember him, yeah. right? And Mags was uh, Dusty's right right-hand man, and uh, he said, he ran up by Dusty, he's been here twice, they're not going to bring him in again. Yeah. I said, Max, I got a whole new gimmick for him. He will not look like Scott Hall. Now, Scott had blondish hair and a big walrus mustache. He looked like Magnum T.A. all jacked up, you know? And he said, all right, well, I'll tell you what, just get him up here. I'll get him to try out. So I call Scott up, and I tell him, they don't want you. You change your look, I can get you in. He goes, what do you mean? I said, we change your hair jet black, honky tonk. She only one's got jet black hair. He's like, oh, Dally, <laughs> jet black hair. <laughs> so he, he agreed. And that night I'm watching MTV. Remember how handsome George Michael was back then? He had the brush cut yeah. beard. No one had had that yet. You remember, Robert. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. watching. Yeah. I guess I've got some of that visual. <laughs> uh, and uh, I called Scott up at 2 o'clock in the morning. I go, dude, I got it. 
you got to shave that mustache off and do like this five o'clock wow. shadow thing. Shave my mustache. Uh. Dally, it's two in the morning. My wife's pregnant. And that's where he pitched me. He's like, his wife's pregnant. He'll do whatever it takes. He needs to get a job. Sure. And, uh, okay, all right, I'll do it. So the next morning, he shows up at my place for my buddies. I'm living with my buddy. I've left my nightclub gigs, and I've left to follow this dream at 35 years old. And uh, he shows up with mousy brown hair and the mustache gone. So you, you look how he looked like a movie star. Right. So I said, that hair's going. Boom. Went him, got his hair jet black, dressed him. No one knew it was him. Yeah. Before we do our first TV, we're eating at Waffle House. I grabbed two toothpicks. I go to him, dude, right before I cancel out the promo, we both take that toothpicks and we shoot them into the camera. <laughs> While I'm doing the promo, at the end, the toothpick falls out of my mouth. I'm like, no! <laughs> and at the end, Scotty, bing, bad guy born, right Amazing. into the camera. So he remembered that. Yeah. And then when I got over crazy in wrestling, the biggest thing was I dropped Scott and Kevin Nash. They were running crazy amok in the NWO, and nobody touched them yeah. except for me. And when I hit that surprise cutter on Scott, and backdrop Kevin off in New Orleans in front of 33,000 people and took off through the people. My rocket took off, and next thing you know, the macho man, Randy Savage, <laughs> wants to work with me. I mean, yeah. it's the greatest thrill of my life. Those guys made it happen, but Scott and I had always tech worked with each other. So when I got that call and we called him, and he was out of it, you know, drinking vodka for breakfast. Yeah. Uh, you know, it was crazy. But by the time he came, now Cody, who's the son that's first born, he's now 23 and breaking into wrestling. So after Scott got up and got on his feet and started to move forward towards the after he had the hip operation stuff, Cody comes up and lives with us too. So now here's the father and son doing this yeah. strong. And, you know, at some point, Scotty said, Dally, You've uh, helped me turn the corner, and I think it's only right because you do it with my girl moving in with me and stuff. It's like, let me and my kid get out of here. They're a, a half a mile down the road. Yeah, they still got to be within your in your vicinity. Mm -hmm. and, and Scotty will pull himself down at times, but we have talked about how, and this is the biggest thing, you know, when people want to pull themselves down, I call it emotional gravity, pulling yourself down. The quickest way to get out of that. First of all, change your physiology. Yeah. Make yourself laugh. I don't care. There's funny stuff that's happened to you that you know is funny. And if you laugh, it will change immediately. Then change what you focus on and the story you tell yourself. So when Scott or Jake start to pull himself down, I go, how's that working for you? Stop telling yourself that story. You don't have to do that. So they're defeating them themselves. That Everyone. was the problem. Yeah. Everyone does that. Yo, oh, God, I ate, I'm doing this diet. I, I eat donuts. Oh, God, I hate myself. Give me two more. Yeah. Yo, then you feel even worse. Oh, God, now I've gained 10. Don't beat yourself up. It's not about how many times you fall down. It's about how many times you get back up. Can I tell you, I think that's my problem. I'm the happiest fat guy. <laughs> <laughs> I you married a hot chick. You will I, be until you get hurt. You know, I, mean, I mean by that, something happens to your health. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, oh, my God, I'm really serious now. Gabe, uh, Gabe Iglesias did that with me. Well, I, I gotta tell you, I ran into him, and he looks fantastic. He as does. Well. Don't let he? me let me tell you, we're gonna take we're gonna take a break. When we come back, I want to talk about uh, Gabriel and another success story that Diamond Dallas Page has a video that you might have seen on YouTube that you may not even know uh, is related to Diamond Dallas Page. I also I don't know if you noticed, but there's a larger man sitting to my left right now. Uh, and I, I, no, larger I, I, than you. <laughs> Larger than life. Why is it always actually, negative? Are you not listening to anything he says? Okay. Focus on the cameras, positive. This isn't just radio. Okay, there's, Michael? there's people actually looking and, and going, no, he's wrong. He's there's smaller. a larger than life. <laughs> we can see that you're fatter Celebrity than Celebrity <laughs> sitting to my lap. A man who has reached out and expressed an interest in, I, in I, help. I, I literally before, I wanted to buy your your uh, program. Well, when we yeah. come back from yeah. break, we're going to talk more to Diamond Dallas Page. And, and maybe if it's okay with you. I have not seen the moves other than the video. Maybe you could try Robert Kelly out and see if he could do a couple of DDP yoga moves. Sure. Would that be okay? I, and I got something I do with everybody, and it's uh, it, it, it proves a point. Yeah. Because I'll challenge anybody at home to do it. And if, yo, know, if you don't think it's real, do this. Are you up for the challenge? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm up for it. I'm just letting you know. The What's last your time balance I, la like? The last time I did yoga, I threw up on my own Wait, mouth. what'd you call Wait, first of all, I, I don't do yoga. What's yeah. it called? I just wanted to what, hear what, you say it. it. It's what's called it? DDP. <laughs> DDP what? 
yoga. It, right. Say yeah. it together. It's not your no. mama's yoga. Ain't right. your mama's yoga monkey. The Artie Lang Show, weeknights on Audience, only on DirecTV. Welcome back to the Artie Lang Show. Diamond Dallas Page is here. Listen to this song. I want you to hear this. Can you tell me who this is? It's new, so. Is it Rob Zombie? Nope. Listen. And the mercury rises, angels fall to the other side. This is brand new. From, it's not coming out for till July, I think. It's brand new Fozzie record. I was going to say that. This is your you boy Chris, Chris Jericho. I was like right there. I was like, but I have not heard this I, this was this is emailed awesome. to me this morning. I don't think this oh. has been played anywhere other than my other show today. Uh, he'll love that quote. Listen to him. He sounds like Ozzy. Listen to this. He it. sounds awesome. On the bus, Chris used to do awesome. Like, we were in the, you know, on trips or whatever with the big bus. He would be back there singing like Ozzy. And yeah. So would Bubba. You know, guys, they love, they love the heavy, heavy metal. It's awesome. Uh, it's how you can have a dream as a kid to be a wrestler and go on to end up being uh, a Chris Jericho-level wrestler. And then also, I kind of wanted to be a rock star. And now he's on, like, his fifth album. He's touring the world. I mean, that's a perfect example of, of uh, follow your dreams. Uh, Kay Adams is, uh, before today, not a very big wrestling fan. But uh, now we is talked it, about it. I are you growing it. on you? Are you? I feel very motivated. I feel uh, bad about myself that I'm not as positive as this gentleman is. But I'm learning a lot. Yeah. Now, I know you were stretching to do your yoga moves. DDP yoga. I was actually, yoga. Wait, I was, I was wait, what, what kind actually. of moves? DDP yoga. Okay, I'm making sure. Okay. So not your, the thing that mamas. struck me before this show and even just during this interview, you're talking about wrestlers, you're talking about athletes, uh, machismo, this, you know, these macho guys. Yoga is the opposite of that. <laughs> you even said that before yeah. you tried it, you scoffed at it. Absolutely. And so how difficult was that to sell? How did you make that successful? Why did you even choose that? And, and just how did you sell that and, and, and do that? It's, it's insane to me. Necessity. I'm a guy who wouldn't be caught dead doing yoga the first 42 years of my life. But again, I told you, I started wrestling 35. My career takes off at 40. 1997 and 98, was I was 41 and 42. I was, according to Pro Wrestling Illustrated, top number four wrestler in the world. My, my bro, Stone Cold, was number one. I was number four. Yeah. So let's say just top 10. I was one of the best guys going. And then I blew my back out. I actually ruptured my L4 and L5. I just signed a multi-million dollar three-year deal. It's the first time I'm ever really getting paid. So I'm living the dream. I'm not ready for it to end. And around that time, I was still married. And uh, Kimberly was like, you got to try yoga to heal your body. I'm like, uh-uh, I'm not doing it. But it really came down to I'd heat, rehab both shoulders, both knees, know a lot about rehab, know a lot about breaking up scar tissue. And I was doing the rehab for my back, but I figure if I'm going to live this, I got to, I got to own it. Right. So I started doing some vinyasana flow type things. And it was, it frustrated the hell out of me because nobody gave you a, uh, like a um, modified position. Yeah. So I had to figure them out in DDP yoga. There's always someone modifying the position always. So what I did was I started to mix after about three weeks. I felt a significant difference. I'm all about you show me results. I will keep doing something. So I, I started to feel a significant difference. So I started mixing the yoga with those rehab moves Threw in the old school calisthenics, push up squats, crunches, done with a slow burn movement. And I figured out by accident, all this is by accident, Yeah. that every time you flex, and I'm going to show this to Robbie in a second here, flex or engage a muscle, your heart has to beat faster to get the blood to the muscle. Right. That's how you get your heart rate jacked up doing DDP yoga, standing still. Okay. And before you know it, in less than three months, what would become DDP yoga, I'm back in the ring. At 42, they say my career is over. 43, I'm the heavyweight champ of the world. I'm the oldest heavyweight champ ever, wow. proud by years wow. for his first time. So you cured yourself. I mean, you're. I healed myself. You healed yourself. You're fixed. But when you got the belt, you were fine. No, you're never fine because I'm out there beating my body up. She asked me earlier, Kay asked me earlier, what's the hardest thing about wrestling? It's the road. Right. It's 100, 200, 300 miles. 
there's nobody packing up my bags like they did for Skid Row. I just saw Sebastian Bach the other yeah, day, right? Yeah. There's nobody packing up my bags. I got to pack my bags. Grab my buddy Stone Cold or Big Show or Kevin Nash. Throw our bags in the back of the car. Get crunched in with four guys. Because we're not making any money. And when we are, we're driving. We're in the main event. So we had to get there and do PR in the morning. Go to the gym. Go to the uh, go to the, uh, the building. Wrestle. Drive 100, 200, 300 miles. Find a hotel. Get up in the morning. Do PR. I mean, it was insane. Insane. Yeah, I don't now, think I think everybody just assumes that a private jet takes you from city to city on every gig and doesn't realize that you're getting rental cars and driving with, you know, three giant guys in the back there and you're all big guys. That's yeah. an uncomfortable, uncomfortable ride. Uh, and and uh, what what do we what would you show Robert Kelly? What are the basic moves? Right? Yeah. Where do we do this? Over there? Is that the way to go? This is great. This is great because Come on, Bobby. I'm gonna show my tight jacket off. Yeah. Yeah, you're gonna need to. Okay. Unless you want to split it down the back. Come on, heavyweight Tyson shirt. Home, do the same thing I'm about to show here. And all I want oh. you to do, and Kyle, I want you to do it stand there. Just you can do it sitting. Just keep your arms. Mike and I have, the, and I have the play by play. Yeah, here. You can do it self. You want to do play by play? Okay. Yeah. We got right, here's this. what I do, Robert. I want you to yeah. put your thumb and index fingers together. Yes. Now, when you do that, yeah. I want you to push really hard against them. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's it. See how your hand, your forearm, your bicep, your pec have to engage? Yeah. Okay, now reach your arm straight out in front of you. Yeah. Keep pushing. Try this at home, monkeys. Keep pushing your thumb and index fingers. Now pull your pinky away, like really tight. See how your hand, look at his forearm, tricep, delt, and trap. See that engages? Yeah, that's pretty crazy. Now create your own resistance, like you're moving through clay. I have Take a cramp in my calf. There's a cramp in my calf. That's yes. right. You'll right get through it. You'll get through it. You'll get through it. Okay, go ahead. Deep breath, take it back. Oh, Follow with me. Bring your arms out to a T. Clench your fist tight. Yeah. Hulk it up, brother. Yeah! <laughs> Attention! <laughs> Shoulders back, chest out. At ease. Oh, Are you serious? Starting to perspire a little bit? Yeah. Turn your feet and get your feet about hip distance apart. Yeah. Slightly bend your knees. Yeah. Do your quads have to engage? Yes. Do this at home. What am I talking to myself? All right. Now grip your toes into the mat or your feet or your shoes. You want right me to there. grab my feet? No, I want you to grip oh, okay. your toes. Like, just like squeeze okay, your toes okay. in the mat. Yeah. So your feet and your calves are engaged? Yeah, yeah. Now straighten your legs. Try to pull them together, but don't move. It's isometrics. Now tuck your tailbone and squeeze your glutes. Just squeeze pretend, your glutes. Just squeeze squeeze Robert glutes. Kelly. Just squeeze pretend you're in the joint. You'll get the picture. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, now, not like that. Sorry, sorry. Stay sorry. down, dog. <laughs> okay, flex your quads. Do this. Flex your quads. Yeah. Flex your glutes. Grab the ball. Open those fingers wide. Awesome. Don't let me out. Oh, perfect. Now reach up. Pull, pull, come over here just a little bit more. Do it in yeah. language yeah. on this thing. Grab that box into of cookies. Into what I call touchdown. Get yeah. some height. Uh, Bring it down. Uh, Push your thumb and index fingers together. Uh, pull those pinkies away. Take it back. Uh, out to a key. Hold it up. Uh, 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 look at him. He's already sweating. Oh, he my God. Very nice. Very nice. Bravo. Look at you. That's awesome. I can't Look at his sweat. Look at his head. He's sweating. He's bleeding. How are you feeling? You all right? I, that's actually it's weird that that you, I can feel all what my muscles. What do you mean weird? Because you haven't used those muscles in yeah. years. Because you think, but you really do think you have to go to the gym, pick up weights, and do all this stuff, or run as fast as you can on a treadmill. I'm out of breath from doing... If we had a heart that. rate, if we had a heart rate monitor on right. you, which is how I work out, right. your heart rate might have gone from 60, 70, wherever you are. So let's say 80, okay? Yeah. I can take my heart rate from 80 to 130, Ooh. raising my arms three times. Oh, okay. Just the raising matter of my where arms. You're stretching and pointing your fingers. Well, just open your fingers like that. Like just feel my hand like that. Like, okay. Feel how loose that is? Yeah. I feel it like that. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. that's like steel. And when that engages, all these muscles do. And then when you create your own resistance. So what I'm doing for everybody who's doing P90X, Insanity and CrossFit, especially you guys doing CrossFit. I own you all. <laughs> He's laughing yeah. at you. He's la you just Stop. you lifted a tractor tire for an hour this morning, and DDP is laughing at you right because now. Because you're going to be so beat up, you're going to need something to heal your body. If you're doing CrossFit, yeah. promise me you're going to start doing some kind of yoga. You, you're, you're only going to really dig DDP yoga because, as you can see, I take all the spiritual mumbo jumbo and throw it out. Yeah. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I, I respect it, but it's not what I do. How long? Is is like if I was to buy a DDB yoga, how long would a one session be? Like if I was uh, in the beginning, it. it's twenty minutes. Twenty minutes, that's it. Yo, let me show you something. When I when I blew my back out, and you guys been sitting, I've been sitting here for. Do you need Robert hour. Kelly again, or is nope. this just you? Okay. This is oh, where my flexibility my... was when I blew my back out. I had to push myself back up. This is my flexibility cold. Oh. You don't even need a wife. Whoa. But Cor so I, I, <laughs> I, 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 I know. I'm just oh, saying. Man. This Take is a my, day off. This is my <laughs> core strength, though. Being able to talk to you 
and take my foot. He is standing on one over foot my right head. now. That's core strength at a different level. That is, that is, that is very that impressive. Is unbelievable. That. And women have the same benefits. I, you know, a lot of women don't like yoga. And the people who, you know, who get that, love that yoga thing, they should do yoga. But if they want to get a lean, mean body that's no impact on your body, I say DDP yoga is kick-ass cardio. Yeah. It will dramatically increase your flexibility and break up scar tissue and strengthen your core like never before with minimal joint impact. Actually, Scott Hall gave me minimal joint impact because I couldn't figure out what to say there. I want to say no impact, zero impact, but my lawyer said, mm -mm, can't say that because there's some, some yeah. impact. And Scott, first day in there, said, Dally, I don't want to, you know, I know you were in there for two hours trying to figure this out, but I've been trying to figure it out for years. Right. And I was hit, I was, we're going to figure this out. And nobody came up with it. I walked in the kitchen. Dally, I don't want to step on anybody's toes, but did you ever think of minimal joint impact? I go, that's Ooh, it. Perfect. There it is. You just paid me back for everything that's going to happen from here on out. <laughs> uh, Diamond Dallas Page is here. My wife came to me because she saw you on Shark Tank. Oh, God, it was fun. She's, she's a workout girl. She likes to do different things. Uh, it seems that uh, the Internet has something new every day. And uh, she she came to me and she said, there's this wrestler. I don't know if you know him and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yeah, he's been busting my balls to try and do the same thing. <laughs> but, uh, but the thing is, if you're, if you're somebody that's not, I mean, we've talked about uh, guys who are drug addicts and have major injuries. If you're, if you're the average woman, if you're the average man, if you're somebody who's just wanting to get in shape a different way, What's the best thing to do? Go to the website? Go to the website. Go to ddpyoga.com. And it's, it's really self-explanatory because all my, if you look at the, I'm not talking about success stories, just read them. And I set up something that no one's ever done before. Not just success stories. I've got guys under and women under construction. Like they ain't to the finish line yet. And they are so moved by, you know, just the whole attitude that I can do this. And look, I, I call people. I have a site called Team DDP Yoga. And when I see some, I call two people today. I said, send me your phone number. I do it all the time. Yeah. Because if anyone knew how much I really reach out and help the people that were doing it, they would never believe it. Well, <laughs> you, I, you, I, you actually have people come to your house for free yeah. every day. Well, not every day. Whenever I'm home and I do I, class. But these are regular people just come and they do a, a yeah. session with you. And a you lot teach of my it. friends or they bring somebody. It's right. not like anybody just walk up my crib. You know? <laughs> and then you cook them breakfast. <laughs> yeah, well, they've done that. We met we, we, Brenda and, and my I'm just trying to get, can I come over your house? <laughs> I would love you to. <laughs> he just wants breakfast. That's all he's <laughs> asking for. Everything we eat is clean and it's delicious. Right, yeah. Listen, we got to take a break. It is always good to see you. Uh, I'm sure there are people out there listening that are looking for help, looking for a way to start or people who just want to get in shape. Go to uh, Diamond Dallas Page's website, DDP Yoga. Search it, Google it, go to YouTube, watch the videos. It's very inspiring. And as a fan, thank you for what you did to, to Jake the Snake and the Scott Hall. You saved two guys' lives, and now they're Hall of Famers. Great job. Thank you very much. I just want to go out in this. Are you in? I'm in. You're in. We're going to do the six pictures? You're going to do the whole thing? I'm doing the whole thing. All right, brother. I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to hook you up. And okay, I have buddy. a new fan. <laughs> awesome. I got jelly beans. We'll take a quick... The Artie Lang Show, weeknights on audience, only on DirecTV.